everybody, it's me Countess. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to this special tarot reading on this September 11th, 2024. Now, um, today marks the 58th anniversary of, allegedly, Paul McCartney's death and replacement by another man named William Shepard. And um, a few days ago, I sent out a video asking you guys if any of you had any questions that you may want me to sit down and ask Paul through the cards. And I got an overwhelming response from you guys. And so thank you for that. I'm super excited to be here sitting down. I um, made sure that I devote had time to devote today to do this reading. Um, I'm excited. Um, I woke up feeling a sort of spiritual surge in me. So I'm hoping that means that we're going to get some answers here. Um, I am going to address these questions um, one by one. And um, I'm going to do different, uh, different types of readings for these questions. So I'm going to use the Beatles Tarot deck that I um, have used each time I've reached out to Paul McCartney. And that is this beautiful deck here. Um, and so for most of the questions, I'm going to just do a four card spread and use that deck to answer questions. However, there are a couple of questions that are more geared towards the like yes or no or, um, you know, I, it's hard for me to get specifics like dates or, um, or yes or no questions with the cards, but there are, uh, sort of yes, no, or indifferent values that are established with each card. And so I figured that I would just use the major arcana out of my pulp tarot deck to answer th those questions. Uh, I, again, with a four card spread seeing if, you know, the answers um, average out to a positive or a negative when wanting to confirm something specific. So I don't know. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do here. Um, I'm just going to fly by the seat of my pants and do whatever feels right and what feels natural when I get to the table. So um, like I said, today marks the 58th anniversary of our dear Paul's death. And we are going to see if he wants to talk to us like he did last year on this date. So sit back and relax, my friends. And if you are interested in seeing what he may have to tell us, I will see you on the other side. Take care. All right, my friends, welcome back to the table. And as you can see, I have set up my Necrometer app. Okay, so it's going to uh, run in the background uh, with each question just to see what comes through. Already, I have got Not Likely and 1960s <laughs> coming through. So we are going to take a look at the first question. First question is from user Tim. Okay, and Tim wants to know... Was Paul gassed or sedated prior to his execution? And so, Paul, let me go ahead and switch back to the necrometer and we will begin. Paul, come forward. Please talk with us. This is the anniversary of your death. Talk with us through the necrometer app or the cards. We would like answers from you today. First question that we have for you is from Tim. And Tim wants to know if you were, in fact, sedated, impaired, drugged, gassed, something before you were uh, eliminated. That's what he would like to know. You know, um, it's... There's all sorts of different rumors about what happened and what actually happened at his death. And 
whoops, you know, we can't be 100% sure. Designers. We weren't there. It says designers, guys. Did the designers of this plan orchestrate and gas you, Paul? Tell us. Were you sedated? Were you drunk? Hindered? You know, we will look for cards that indicate some sort of mind alteration, if that is the case. Were you sedated? Com comedian. <laughs> Interesting. Is that Billy's full energy coming through? 1960s designer, comedian. Wow, okay. All right. Were you gassed or sedated before your death, Paul? I'm just about ready to draw the cards. We will do one more shuffle. All right. Four cards. The Emperor, the Nine of Swords, oh, oh, we have the Six of Cups, oh, that's so fascinating, oh, and the Three of Pentacles in reverse, check this out, you guys, we have the numbers, three, six, and nine on the board. The emperor is the fourth card, but he stands for the one who calls the shots, basically. Huh. Whoa. Okay, so what I'm seeing here, I'm not seeing anything. You are not. You are not. <laughs> I am not what? Okay. Somebody, ooh, and this is such eerie, eerie, uh, you know, symbolism in this card here. Look at it. It's the Nine of Swords. It's John Lennon's Bloody Glasses. Persepsisaciousness? Pers I do not even know what that word means. Anyways. <laughs> Okay, so I am seeing, so the Nine of Swords, guys, is the sort of anxiety. You're just up at night, just um, riddled, riddled with anxiety and paranoia, just angst. And it's all coming from this emperor, the orchestrator, the designer <laughs> of this plan. The three of pentacles comes up so much in these readings, you guys, but it is in reverse here. Okay. That's showing that things did not go to plan. That's showing me that. Um, so there is a link here with the six of cups. The six of cups is all um, the sort of childhood um, past carboardum. What are these words coming up? <laughs> I don't get it, Necrometer. Um, the Six of Cups is all about your past, your past connections, your childhood, um, being anxious about the past. How does this correlate to him being gassed or sedated? I don't see anything here telling me that he was sedated or gassed. It's showing me that something didn't go to plan. Something that this emperor wanted to happen didn't go to plan. And it has caused anxiety and has caused some sort of uh, reflection uh, to be had. So, sorry, Tim, I did not get any sort of solid answer here. Okay, so this is where... The major arcana cards are going to come in. I will draw one major arcana card to signal yes or no to the question. I am seeing that something went off plan. Austin. Austin. 
Okay, I don't know what Austin is supposed to mean. <laughs> it's not supposed to mean anything uh, as far as we're concerned here. But I am seeing that something did not go to plan according to his death. Uh, something went off plan and caused some, some worry, I guess you could say. Caused some sort of. So were you gassed or sedated? We have the moon. The moon signals lies, signals deception, the occult forces hidden. It shows that, yes, there is a big secret attached to this whatever that didn't go to plan. This execution of this plan did not go how this person wanted it to. And the moon is showing these occult forces at work in, you know, it's not really actually giving me, I would not say yes or no to it. I would say that, um, Something about this is being hidden. Whatever went wrong, we won't know the answer to. So I'm sorry, Tim, but I don't see a specific answer to that question. And I won't always. I won't always get an answer. Um, but I do see um, them telling us that there were occult forces at work here. And there is a major secret tied to this something going awry in the master plan that was built by this emperor. So that is that question. Okay. So let's go ahead and person. Okay. So this next question is coming from AB Toronto. Okay. He wants to know, Paul, is your soul free of Billy yet? Is your soul free of Billy yet? So let's see if we can get an answer for Toronto AB. Paul, is your soul? Are you still connected to Billy? Is there still that connection with you too? You know, that uh, Six of Cups would be a good card to get to indicate that there is a connection still. You just got the Six of Cups. Uh, but we'll see. Paul, are you still attached to Billy? You know, we've heard from you in the past that you're really fed up with Bill, <laughs> but are you free of him? Have you gotten free of him? Also, guys, I forgot to mention, I have this deck of um, Egyptian Oracle, Egyptian God's Oracle card. So um, I will draw one here and there, a card here and there for uh, whatever reading I do that stands out to me to do a reading with those cards. Um, Actually, I might do it with this one because of the whole soul transmigration and Billy saying to be, you know, Horus and Osiris all in one because he is Paul and himself all in one. So are you still together? Are you still joined with Billy Paul? That is what we want to know. The Necrometer's not going too crazy today. So and so far, the words that have come up have not really... Frank. Frank. Okay. Wasn't John Lennon's dad named Frank? Frank Lennon? Frank. 90. 90. Well, there's the number nine. <laughs> Are you still connected to Billy Paul? Talk to us. Okay, so we have the Two of Cups. Wow. That is an automatic yes. They are still tied together. We have the, I'm sorry, that came out reversed. The Five of Pentacles in reverse. We have the Star in reverse. And we have the Five of Cups in reverse. Yes, he is still attached to Billy, guys. The Two of Cups is the relationship card, the agreement card, the card that signals two bodies, individuals coming together and sharing their emotional wealth in spring. <laughs> but I find it interesting that there's the five of pentacles next to it in reverse. So this is the poverty card, guys. And in reverse, it's showing that there is an overcoming of this 
Um, they are joined together. He's still there, but Bill is sucking out any resemblance of Paul from the picture. The star being in reverse with this five of pentacles in reverse together are showing me that. We have two fives in reverse showing that there have been obstacles to overcome in this whole situation. Paul's star, if you will, has dimmed and Bill has taken over and it is not leaving Paul this feeling... Is this is a warning. <laughs> it is not leaving Paul feeling good at all. He is detached and wants to walk away from the situation but cannot because it's in reverse. So yes, AB Toronto, Paul is still attached to Billy. Their souls are still joined together. How about that? So let's do an Egyptian oracle card for this one and see what, isn't this a beautiful deck? We'll just see what card we get What um, in regards to this question. Is Paul's soul still connected to Billy's soul? We have number 17, Sekhmet, Sekhmet, which equals justice. Wow, justice, which is very interesting to me because the Justice card in the Tarot deck, Major Arcana, is the 11th deck. And the number 11 in itself stands for that duality. So that's what this makes me think of when the whole term of justice comes up. Hedged. Hedged. <laughs> it is that polarity, right? Because each 11 represent each pillar of the Freemasonic temple, Hakim and Boaz. You have those polarities, those opposites at play constantly here to bring the scales into balance for a just result. So that tells me intuitively that they are still joined together and he's either seeking justice or it is because those, you know, they're the two opposites and negatives that they are, are together right now. It's representing that 11 that stands together. Funnily enough, on the 11th day of September. So, excellent. Okay, next we will do Raymond Richardson's question. Hello, Raymond. Raymond has been a long time watcher of my channel. Back, I'm going on two years now, guys, of making content on my channel. And Raymond's one of them who has been there with me since those days. So shout outs to him. And thanks for asking a question, Raymond. Raymond wants to know if Paul ever thinks of or watches over Bettina Hoover's. And yes, what a great question. We would all like to know if he's still, you know, is he her guardian angel? We'll see if we can get anything out of the cards. If not, we'll pull a major arcana for a yes or no confirmation. Are you still watching over Bettina Hoover's, Paul? Let us know. Admit. Admit. <laughs> That's funny. So yes, please admit to us. What, are, what is the deal? Are you still watching over her? She is your child, allegedly. And she did not find justice when she tried to find out the truth. She found out that, you know, Billy was an imposter, basically. It even says so in the memoirs, you know? Okay, so we have the Three of Cups. Interesting. We have the Queen of Wands. We have the Chariot in Reverse. And we have the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. Huh. That is so interesting. Okay, so the Three of Cups is all about um, indulgence and <laughs> sort of like 
um, I find this interesting with the symbolism on this on this card. Here's Patty Boyd up here at the top, and here's uh, George and Eric Clapton at the bottom. You know, they were both in love with her. They were both um, fighting over her. Very interesting. Um, <laughs> but this is the card of indulgence, of um, partaking in too much. Um, you are partying too much. It's a warning of sort of substance abuse. It can be. Uh, paired with the Queen of Wands, um, Maureen um, Starkey, uh, once a Bond girl. Tickle. Tickle. That's very random. <laughs> um, the Queen of Wands indicates a woman who is just full of fiery passion and desire. The creative human spirit shines brightly through her. Um, so, and then, but the chariot in reverse is showing a block, a unableness, a stagnation, and um, not being able to move forward. There is no opportunity here with the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. There's no opportunity for any sort of financial gain from this situation, I guess, for this Queen of Wands. I would say that, yes, he is watching over her. This is her. This, so intuitively, that is what it is saying to me, and she has not been able to get what she deserves or move on with her life. There has been no payoff for being Paul McCartney's daughter, but he does watch over her. That's what this Three of Cups is showing me. It's showing a sort of fulfillment and a, you know, the threes represent um, groupings and life cycles, you know, think all things come in threes, right? The beginning, the middle, the end, you have birth, life and death, etc, etc, you know, so that's showing me that there is a sort of um, emotional fondness or attachment or indulgence attached to this Queen of Wands. Yes, I do believe that he is watching over Bettina. But there is no opportunity for her to cash in in this mortal coil for being Paul McCartney's daughter. You know, she knows it. Voice. Voice. <laughs> I'm giving you a voice, Paul. Yes. Talk to us. Let's just see what um, the Major Arcana has to say, if it confirms this or not. Are you watching over Bettina? Strength. Yes, he is. He is watching over her and is very proud and very, she's a very strong woman. That is very cool that it's attached to this um, because, um, well, the King of Wands is the Leo card, which is attached to the Strength card, which is also Leo. Never mind, I was going to say those go hand in hand, but the Queen of Wands is actually Aries, not Leo, but that's okay. We still have that fire energy going and we have that proud, yes, the strength indicates, yes, 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 very positive card to have. Helen. So, Helen, as in Helen Wheels? <laughs> Helen, Helen Wheels. Ain't nobody else gonna know the way that she feels. Okay, let's all go on to the next. So this is coming from Mr. Wayne Schlegel. And he says, I would ask him about the real date of his death. And this goes in tow with Ralph Pacheco. Ralph also wanted to know about the real date of his death. So... This one, guys, I'm going to deal with the major arcana only. I'm going to, I'm going to ask Paul, was your real date of death September 11th? You know, a lot of Americans will argue that Sergeant Pepper's the drumskin says 
that he died November 9th, right? Because it says 11 9 66 or he died, right? 11 9. But <clears throat> it's also discussed in memoirs that Americans are also kind of pompous in assuming that that is the way everybody in the world writes their dates because it's not. The European standard is to put the date first and then the month and then the year. So the drum skin reads 11, 9, he die. And that is what brings it back to being September 11th as opposed to the mirrored, op, you know, which would be November 9th, 11, 9. So I'm going to ask straight up, yes or no. I'm going to just do one card, a one card reading off of this, yes or no. Oh. Food, okay. Did you die, Paul, on September 11th? Yes or no, through the cards, yes or no. The star, yes. Yes, he did. That is the real date of his death. Okay, let's see um, what the oracle cards want to tell us. The Egyptian gods. Okay, this one came out. Transformation. Anubis uh, came out. Number 11. Guys, <laughs> just like I was talking about the number 11, but this one is transformation. So on September 11th, 1966, Paul was transformed. His soul transmigrated into William somehow. Okay, so the next one is from Wild Annie 6788. How much of this did you know or predict before you passed? How much of the death did you know of? How much of the whole situation did you know of or predict before you passed? Did you, were you aware of this entire situation? I guess is what Wild Annie wants to know. Were you aware of, did you predict your death? Did you predict all of this happening like Memoir says you did through your dreams? You know, that you had these visions in your head, these dreams that showed you what was going to happen and that you would have a replacement who had your name live on. How much of this did you know or predict, Paul? How much did you know or predict before you passed away? Okay. Wow, we have the death card, number 13. <laughs> the eight of wands in reverse. We have the chariot in reverse. Oh, and the tower in reverse. Holy Pete. Okay, so I'm going to say he knew about and predicted everything. He knew that there was this transformation coming. He knew his death was on the horizon, right? And he tried and tried and tried to get people to believe him. He tried to let people know beforehand, but people didn't take him seriously. That's what this Eight of Wands in Reverse is telling me. Or this, um, I'm sorry, it's the Seven of Wands in Reverse. My bad. But still, the Seven of Wands is still the same principle. You're trying to hold your ground, but you can't. People will not believe you. You're trying to prove your point, and it's just fruitless. The Chariot in Reverse is showing a failed disappointment um, that... You're unable to proceed to the next chapter, basically. There is stagnation. He knew all about this horrible, crazy upheaval of an event that was going to happen in his life, and he was powerless to change it. He, had, he couldn't change it, and he knew that. So, yes, he knew about all of this while Danny all of it. That are, that's hands down what these cards are telling me. Wow, I can't believe we got the death card <laughs> on this. With the tower in reverse. What a trip. Let's see what the Egyptian gods have to say. We have number 23, Sobek. Union and power, guys. Union and power is the oracle card for this question. He had full knowledge either because he was connected to the spirit realm or 
Wow, I'm blown away by this oracle card. The union, the union of Billy and Paul together. He knew that this would bring immense power for the McCartney name, this major life event. Holy Pete, I can't believe that. That is nuts, guys. Okay, so that's that question. Great question, and we got a great answer too. So fantastic. All right, let's go to the next question. Fantastic. Thank you, Paul. The next question comes from Susan Brissett. Again, she's an old time subscriber of mine as well. Hello, Susan. Thank you for asking a question. Susan wants to know, did Billy Shepard channel songs from James Paul McCartney? I would want to know, does he still too? Did he or does he channel songs from you, Paul? Does he channel songs from you? I kind of feel like from the past tarot readings I've done that he's sort of forgotten about you and hasn't really given you your due respect um, in the whole equation. But I don't know, I do believe that. You know, Billy's always talking about how his music just comes to him from somewhere. It's magical, right? Well, is that coming from Paul? Memoirs tells us that he does channel Paul and he is able to play the bass like Paul. He's able to write like Paul, etc. So let's see what he says. We have the Empress. We have the Four of Pentacles in reverse. We have the Five of Wands in reverse. Oh, and there's that Two of Cups, guys. The Two of Cups. <laughs> Yes, he does channel. Okay, so the Empress is all about abundance, guys. She's all about the mother goddess archetype, the one who provides all of the abundance in life. You know, it is a birthing card, a birthing of creativity. I'm seeing that is what is coming through. You know, the four of pentacles in reverse is showing you're sort of collecting all of these things that are being put out there. You know, you're um, able to hold on to all of this information that's coming towards you. Um, the five of wands in reverse is showing me that it's easy. It comes easy because this is in reverse Things are coming easy. All of this stuff, all of this abundance is being channeled through him very easily. And that is because of the union. The two of cups shows me that union between him and him and Paul allow this abundance to come forth and come through very naturally, very easy. So yes, Susan, he did. And I would say he still does channel songs from James Paul McCartney. And we'll see what card we get here. Wholeness. There you go. The Toth, number 12. Wholeness. So <laughs> there you go. The two of them together, writing songs together in a partnership, if you will, is that wholeness that the wisdom of Toth brings. Fascinating. Awesome. Okay, <laughs> we are getting some great answers today. So great. Okay, guys, this next question is coming from Mr. Ralph Pacheco. Ralph, of course, was part of Stephen Faber and John Lennox's team of discovering information on the Standing Stone and its significance in the whole PID lore and realm, right? That we all believe Mr. James Paul McCartney's remains are up at that standing stone. My cards have confirmed it twice already. We want to know, Ralph wants to know, what is the significance of the standing stone? Again, is this your resting or unrested place? That is what Ralph wants to know. That is his question. What is the significance with the standing stone? My cards have confirmed this in the past twice, that yes, his 
remains are up there at that standing stone and this it all planned out to be that way that Billy would watch over his remains because Paul bought that farm right before he died. He bought his uh, funeral plot basically. Crazy. What is the significance of that standing stone? Tell us, Paul. We have the Five of Cups. We have the Knight of Pentacles in reverse. Ooh, that is haunting. Look at this card, guys. It's Paul in the rear view mirror. His lone Hoffner base just standing upright. But he's in the rear view mirror looking at us with his right eye. Oh, his right eye of Horus. Oh my gosh, that's nuts. We have strength. <gasps> And we have the King of Swords in reverse. The King of Swords in memoirs. Paul is said to stand for the King of Swords in the chapter Masonic Checkmate through the yellow submarine cards at the time. Um, I think from the 1974 edition, he was the Ace and the King of Swords. That's very interesting. And he's in reverse. That standing stone is a pillar. A pillar that the Knight of Pentacles is attached to. The Five of Cups indicates a sort of longing to, you know, you're confronting your sadness. You're longing to turn your back on the sadness at hand, but you can't. The situation at hand, but you cannot turn away. The Knight of Pentacles in reverse is showing burnout. It's showing uh, a light. Um, a stability of some sort has been overturned. It's showing a light has been dimmed. Um, wow, and I find this symbolism to be very eerie. You know, Paul in a car looking back at us and he's in reverse. So that's showing me a sort of death. It's giving me a death vibe. That standing stone, the significance of it is a pillar where these two people, the King of Swords, Paul, and the Knight of Pennies, Paul, <laughs> are attached to to it. It could even be Billy and Paul, you know. Um, the knight, the king of swords being in reverse is showing somebody who is allowing their emotions to take over their thought and logic. So it is a very emotionally significant pillar of strength, a pillar for this knight of pennies, a young man who burned out, who is in reverse, to rest. That is what this is showing me. Again, his bones are up there at that standing stone. I'm going to ask yes or no question uh, with the Major Arcana cards. Yes or no, is the standing stone where Mr. McCartney is it where he is buried, where his remains are? The tower. You bet your bottom dollar. Yes. That is where he is. Let's pull a uh, Egyptian God Oracle card too and just see what, <laughs> what card we would get here. We have Isis. <laughs> <laughs> Isis, faith and wisdom. Isis is attached to that. So the standing stone significance is also we can look at the tower. The tower represents a major life event that caused humongous upheaval and unrest. You know, that is also significant to what the significance of the standing stone has, right? But it also contains faith and wisdom there. Isis is watching over it. You know, Isis was able to, with her magic, was able to, you know, 
um, have Osiris rise from the dead long enough to have sex with her to conceive Horus, the sun god, child, right? <laughs> I just find it so interesting that, you know, the mother, the mother of the Egyptian trinity, as it were, has significance to that standing stone, the faith and wisdom in the oracle card. Just know that, that yes, his, his remains are up there, Ralph. These cards confirm it. Again, third time to charm, third time I've had my cards confirm that the significance of the standing stone is his resting place, where he is laid to rest. Okay, so moving on. We have a question from Mr. Dave Kornblum. Shout outs to Dave. Dave has done some really cool stuff. I collaborated with him back in the day, back in the day, a little while ago. He put um, me reading some of the talent contest uh, poems. He put that to music. Um, very cool. Go check out his YouTube channel. He's a great musician. Shout outs to you, Dave. Another great you know, supporter of my channel through these last couple of years. The corn Blum would like to know, my question would be, Paul, do you connect with John George and any other key members, producers, managers on the other side? And do you have a shared view on how things are now? Like, what do you guys think about what's been going on? <laughs> Great question, Dave. All right. So, Paul, do you connect with um, John and George on the other side or George Martin or Brian Epstein? Do you connect with these guys? Let's see if the cards will tell us. Talk with us through the cards. You know, all the representations of your bandmates are in these cards. So, yeah, there's a great picture of John and George on here. Lay it out for us. Do you know what he has to say? Okay, so we have the Ten of Cups in reverse. Sorry, I just have to see what suit it is when it comes out. We have the world. Interesting. We have the Nine of Swords. Then we have the King of Wands. So I'm not seeing a direct um, answer to that question. I am not seeing any sort of... Um, interaction with others. I see the king of wands, the world, anxiety, you know, a lack of fulfillment, emotional fulfillment. So no, I don't see any sort of collaboration going on um, on the other side with other people, other people who were involved with the band as well. I'm not seeing that at all. So let's ask a yes or no question to the Major Arcana card. So, Paul, do you still connect with John George, George Martin, Brian Epstein, Stuart Sutcliffe? Do you still connect with any of them? Yes or no? The Magician. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so the Magician is definitely a sign that yes. Things are happening, things are manifesting, all of your wildest dreams are coming true. So maybe that has something to do with um, the world card, you know. All four of them are together um, making music in some way, shape, or form, right? Um, the King of Wands, I don't know who that would represent. I'm not sure... Not Ringo, because Ringo is still alive, and we're talking about people on the other side. So, but he does connect with all of them, even the two who are on the mortal coil still. So, I would say with the magician answering yes or no, saying yes, and it being the magician card, yes, Dave, he does still connect with them all. Um... Again, some of these questions are hard to get, you know, specific answers to, but um, I can also, that's why I'm kind of using a variety of decks to see what other decks have to say as well. <laughs> okay, so next question is from Mr. Scott Smith. 
another fab supporter of my channel. So again, thank you, Scott, for all of your support. Your question, his question is, I'd ask him if the truth of his demise and the replacement will ever be revealed, perhaps revealed by Billy. Great question, Scott. Will your secret be revealed? The, the, the truth of your demise and of your replacement, will it be revealed to the world at all, ever? That's a great question. Will the truth be revealed, Paul? Will you reveal the truth? Okay. All right. We have justice inverted. Yikes. Not a good card to start with. We have the Knight of Swords. We have the Three of Cups. And we have the Nine of Cups. No, I would say that the truth will not be revealed at least anytime soon. This justice in reverse tells me that right off the bat, there is no justice for the truth being revealed. Um, not anytime soon, at least, you know, it's these ideas, um, it just wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, um, for, especially for Billy, it wouldn't be something that would be desired to have happen because all the house of cards would come tumbling down. Um, so no, I'm, I'm seeing that no, the truth will never come out. Well, but let's ask yes or no. Will the truth of your demise and replacement ever be revealed to the world? This card says no. Let's see what happens. The high priestess, the high priestess, is showing that, yes, the truth will be revealed. The injustice will be revealed, I guess. Let's see. So the Knight of Swords upright is a positive card. This is not a positive card. This is showing an injustice in the world, an injustice of his demise and replacement, right? Going forward. The High Priestess is all about the truth, right? She is about the mysteries. The She can even represent the Masons um, in certain factors. But generally, she is a positive card when she comes out in a yes or no scenario that the truth will be revealed because she is the holder of the truth. So... If you look at these other cards, they're all positive. The Nine of Cups is like a super positive card showing total emotional fulfillment in, with, within oneself from the source of oneself. Um, it's like satisfaction. You know, the Three of Cups is showing the sort of coming together and indulgence. It is a positive card because there's partnerships involved. The Knight of Swords is executing these ideas that have been brought forward. So yes, the execution, executing the truth. She holds the truth and yes, the truth will be revealed eventually. And it could be revealed by Billy. I don't know. It could, you know, or it could be revealed after Billy passes away too. Let's just see what the Egyptian gods have to say as well. They have to say, we have Kepri, change. Yes, change. And so Kepri is the beetle, the beetle lord, guys. He, Kepri is the ancient scarab beetle god. And in this card, it is the 18th card. Numerology there, one plus eight is nine. That's Paul's number, right? Number nine. Capri equals change because the beetle, the scarab beetle was no, uh, regarded as resilient because it was birthed from nothing, basically. That <laughs> the scarab buried its dung ball 
in the sand and that is where its eggs and little beetles sprout up, you know, and they come and it's this ever, ever present change. They are able to bury themselves. They're able to die and be reborn again, basically. So <laughs> I just find that very interesting and symbolic that we got Capri with this question that yes, the truth will be revealed and the change and the replacement will be revealed. The truth will be told. Excellent, excellent, excellent. These are great questions, guys. Great questions. Okay, so we're getting towards the bottom of the questions. And this next one is coming from Miss Sally Witty. Miss Sally would like to know, she says, according to Egyptian tradition, a deceased body must go through the process of mummification. Mum being the root word, wax, enabling the soul to travel back and forth from the underworld. Was Paul mummified according to Egyptian tradition? Okay, so we're going to look to do yes or no with this because, um, well, let's just see what the cards have to say. I'll leave them out and we'll see if we get more positive than negative cards or yes or no cards. We'll see. Was he mummified? We have interesting the nine of wands in reverse that's a no the three of cups in reverse that's a no we have death <laughs> that is a yes and we have the page of swords which would be a yes so okay very interesting, very indifferent. So let's see what the Major Arcana cards would have to say. There's a split down the middle here. Was Paul mummified according to Egyptian tradition? Yes or no? We have the Magician in reverse. That is a no. So let's see what the, whoa, okay. The Egyptian Oracle cards have to say. We have Apophis, number 34, which is darkness. So I would say, no, he was not mummified according to Egyptian tradition. Okay, great, great question, Miss Sally, because, I mean, that significance in itself is very fascinating. I didn't know that about mum being uh, a root word for wax. And that, you know, I did know that the mummification enabled them to kind of, you know, bridge between the material and the um, immaterial realms. But I didn't know that about the root word of wax. Okay, so the next question comes from my beautiful friend Kat at the Supernatural Beatles channel. And Kat wants to know if Billy is possessed by the entity NK. Um, she says, in the whisper messages, we are told if Crowley's predictions and rituals are correct, that Billy is possessed by far more powerful entities than Paul. What I would like to know is if one of them is Enki. As you know, I believe the Paulism is really about building a new religion around Enki, with Paul as the face of it. Just as Billy has used Paul's face, Enki could do the same. Definitely. And thank you for the question, my friend. Yeah, so Enki is basically the sort of uh, Sumerian or Mesopotamian Anunnakian representation of Lucifer. Um, whereas Enlil is the representation of Jehovah for Yahweh. So it would make sense because Paulism is basically another extension of Luciferianism that it would be. Uh, Enki would be one of the entities that would be possessed by Billy. Billy as Horus, the sun god. Horus slash Osiris. So, I don't know. We'll see what the uh, cards tell us if they reveal any sort of impl implication that he is possessed 
by a powerful entity. Or we'll see if we get more positive cards for yes than we do negative for no. Let's check it out. So we have the Four of Pentacles in reverse. We have the Empress. We have the Seven of Cups. Interesting. And we have Strength, the Will card itself. So funny enough, Miss Cat, that you're asking about Crowley, you know, and his love under will is the law, while well, strength is the will card. That is the willpower card. The empress indicates abundance and the sort of rebirth of a new age. If, if you will, it is the love card. It is all about, you know, this prosperity coming through. The four of pentacles in reverse is showing that you're um, kind of like a collector of things and there's a block though in that. Um, but I find this interesting, right? Like the se Seven of Cups is usually um, a card that represents like delusion or um, yeah, like or an illusion. I find it interesting that there are multiple Georges on this card. You know, oh, the possibilities are endless, right? Well, maybe that could be in par with Billy and his identities. You know, Billy and his seven different identities that circle around within him. I don't know. I find that symbolism on that card to be quite uncanny when we're talking about Billy being possessed by Enki. I would say positive outweighs the negative in this, and there is a um, unanimous yes. He is being possessed by this entity, Enki. So let's see what the Egyptian god deck has to say about it. <laughs> we have Apophis, darkness. So not sure exactly what that is supposed to represent, but it can, I would say darkness, the darkness that comes from the possession of this Luciferian deity. That's what I, that's what my gut is telling me in my reaction. We have the hermit reversed as a yes or no. It is a yes. Number nine, number nine, number nine, using Paul's face, using... Um, so yes, my friend, my cards and my gut are saying, yes, Billy is in fact possessed with the deity entity and key. Fabulous question. Okay. So Miss Desiree has the next question. Dear, dear Desiree. She says, um, I would like to ask Paul if indeed he had dreams about his death and whether he really understood the Faustian bargain. And another question, if he isn't connected to Billy anymore. Well, we answered that at the beginning and he is still connected to Billy, but he is ready to be disconnected. That's for sure. Um, but let's see what he says about this. Did, so did you have dreams about your death? And did you really understand the Faustian bargain that was being put into effect with you having to die because of it? We have the moon, which indicates occult forces at work. Secrets. We have the eight of pentacles, which indicates hard work. We have the page of swords, indicates sort of this, you know, uh, moving forward with an idea of sorts. <laughs> the Hierophant in reverse. This indicates to me black magic going against, you know, religious doctrine. It is all things unholy. It is rules and regulations turned on its back where it's uh, anarchy and rebellion and the black so I would consider this to be a representation of the Faustian pact, especially with the moon intact. So yes, he was very much aware of this Faustian pact. 
and the occult forces at work due to the pact. He had dreams. They were, you know, in his mind. They were in his subconscious. The moon represents the subconscious mind, you know. So, yes, I would say he did have these dreams about his death, about where his name would be, if all of this would be in vain or if it would be, you know, of, for some advantage to him. But the Faustian bargain was in full effect and he was well aware of it. Yes, my friend, he was well aware of the Faustian pact and had the dreams about his death. That is confirmed right here with the moon and the Hierophant in reverse screams it to me. Let's see what the Egyptian God says. Seshat is wisdom. So <laughs> this is wisdom. We are getting wisdom here, right? Okay. So that would be a over resounding. Yes. Great question. Thank you, Miss Desiree. All right. And so the final question I have for the cards and for you, Paul is from subscriber Alexander Gosnick. So Alexander says, please ask Paul if Jane Asher is still with us. She is alive and is the same Jane Asher celebrity in the UK. Kat had a presentation a few years ago. Um, it was actually like, I think about a year and a half ago that Jane Asher may have been replaced. And yes, she did have that presentation and fairly convincing presentation at that. So let's see. Cards, can you tell us? Again, I've asked the cards this question in the past and I didn't get much conclusive answers uh, to the question. So we'll see what it says then. Is Jane Asher still alive? The original Jane Asher who dated Paul McCartney back in the 1960s. Is she still with us? Strength. The Queen of Wands. We have the Nine of Cups in reverse, and we have the Four of Swords in reverse. This is telling me, yes, she is still with us because I'm seeing the Queen of Sticks and she's upright. She, this could be representing Miss Asher. And because she's upright and not in reverse, my gut is showing me strength, yes. Yes, she is still with us. She was not replaced. But she definitely knew about the replacement and all of that stuff. But let's just for, for fun, let's ask yes or no. Is Jane Asher still with us? We'll ask the 22 cards of the Major Arcana and we'll see what we get. Is Jane Asher still with us? The Emperor. Yes, she is still with us. That is a positive card confirming she was not replaced, but she is still with us and still alive here today. That's what my cards say today. Um, I'm going to take it that way because she is up right here. So, okay. So I would just like to say thank you to each one of you who reached out and asked a question to Paul today. I hope I did the, your questions justice. You know, I hope that you got, you know, an answer that you will be satisfied with. I really do feel like we did get some confirmations in these readings with these questions. And yeah, you know, Paul McCartney did die 58 years ago um, in a car accident um, and was replaced by William Shepard. And I think, you know, for the truth to ever be revealed and for, you know, the secret to be out, we have to continue to talk about it. No matter how crazy we sound when we do talk about it, we have to keep talking about it and keep telling people about it because it is created, it is connected to this larger psyop being thrown upon the world population and you know we all need to become aware so we can prevent what the plans that are being set in motion cannot happen cannot come to fruition so 
Anyways, guys, that is this Paul McCartney tarot reading. And I thank you for joining me. And until the next one, guys, please take care of yourselves. And I will see you later. Bye. But though they may be parted, there is still a chance built that they will see.